Okay, boys and girls, he bought back coming at you one more time with another video. And we're gonna talk about something one more time because it doesn't matter like how many times you talk to a damn Sony fanboy or a Sony fanatic in most cases. They just do not get it. They don't get it. It's like they're missing a screw or like my brother Unlimited Production says, like they're in a cult or a part of the Illuminati or something. It's it's like there's no words for their actions and their behavior to the extent where they just don't face reality. They just keep lying to themselves and acting as if, you know, lying and acting as if like their, their, their reality is different than from our real reality, right? This title of this video is going to be Sony fans, stop using Metacritic, stop using the Jeff Keighley Awards, and stop using console sales to drive your narrative of superiority, right? Because the bottom line is this. None of those things mean anything without other things that go with it to complement it or to actually cement that they are meaningful or mean something. So I'll start off with the, you, the, the, the more, you know, common sense one. The Jeff Keighley Awards was created by Jeff Keighley himself, which was he, he was an insider that worked in websites for games like GT TV, right? Like uh, game trailers, right? That's what they were called and things of that nature, right? And he's been doing things in the industry for many, many years. So he got to the point where he was able to financially put together enough money to host a show with people in the industry and developers to show different things at the end of the year and to celebrate gaming. Right? To celebrate gaming as a whole during the course of that year. Like what games came out, what games were, were good, what games were not, you know, what type of games were there. You know, to celebrate it and made his own awards, right? But what you guys fail to understand that his table of people that run the awards, that pick and choose, are the actual people that work at these existing sites. Like an IGN like a game trainers, like a giant bomb, like a Euro gamer, like a push square and circle. Sites that already by their own default and nature are biased and that are unfair or a lot of times just hate on Xbox because they are not really Xbox centric. They're sites that are more Sony centric and Nintendo centric. So these are the people that are making the choices of the games to pick during the course of that year. That's why when you saw that Forza Horizon, I believe was three that year, when it was the best racing game out and available, was not even nominated on the racing category over Rocket League, which Rocket League is not a racing game. Rocket League was a sports game with cars, so you're playing them inside a car. It's not a racing game. It's a soccer game that you play with cars. And that one, racing game of the year, okay? In a category that he just made up himself. So this is not a real sophisticated award, right? This is an award that was created by a fanboy of PlayStation because he has been very vocal, open, and honest about me. He's a straight up fanboy. Okay, to cater to the people that follow him, which are in most cases 90% of the people that follow him are Sony centric fans and to some extent Nintendo fans. So he's always going to make sure that the ones that get the most shine are Sony and Nintendo. So Microsoft, to try to play nice and try to be a player, they decided to tell them, hey, you can host it in our Microsoft Center that we have. 
I guess to think to so that they can use certain things to their advantage. Meaning, if they want to show something on stage, because he's not going to highlight Microsoft, they can and beat him in his own game. That's why the year where they showed in the reveal of the Xbox Series X console, he basically they overshined everything else that was shown in the show, and nobody else talked about it except that and the reveal trailer of Hellblade 2 right the reason for that is because that is not a real award that is a uh, fan driven award it's not an award created by actual people inside the industry that actually work within the industry like developers you know uh, real uh, technicians and engineers that create these hardware create these games that make it a real award that gives the staple and the value of games and the categories that they deserve. Now, something that is a real award is like the Joystick Award, right? Or like the SIGGRAPH Award. The SIGGRAPH Award is the most sophisticated award that anyone can win in the tech field, whether it's a video game company or an electronic company, because it's all about tech and technology, right? And Microsoft has won numerous times with their video games in the SIGGRAPH Award, even with their console. They won with Rise, they won with Quantum Break, they even won with Halo Reach, right? There's never been a Sony game that's ever won for technology, right? In the SIGGRAPH Award. That is a prestigious award. That is a real award, right? But nobody wants to mention it. Nobody looks it up. And it's all public record. It's all there. The information's all there for you. It's not like no one can find it. Anyone can, if you actually looked, right? That is a award that's actually worth talking about, bragging about, okay? Because it's very sophisticated, professional, and prestigious. It's been around for a long time. So those awards mean nothing. So if they got a World one game of the year, that doesn't mean anything. Of course it's gonna win game of the year. It's a Sony-centric created award by a Sony fanboy and his following and fan base, which the majority that pick the games are from biased Sony-centric and Nintendo-centric sites. And then after they pick those games, then they ask the public to make their choices based on the games that were there to pick the games when they already picked the games for them. Because even Gears 5 and wasn't even, you know, or 4 wasn't even nominated in the Game of the Year award when they came out, when they should have, because they were Game of the Year contenders, okay? So, no. Stop using the Game Award, the Jeff Keighley Award, because that Jeff Keighley Award is a joke. It's just there for entertainment value and to bring more awareness to the gaming culture and the industry, to the casuals. That's all it's there for. Next. Stop talking about console sales. It doesn't matter if Sony's selling more consoles. Last generation already proved that. Because what matters and what drives sales in the time and era that we live in, and even before, are software sales, meaning game sales. And now we have subscriptions and services. With subscriptions and services is what's moving the industry forward. It's what's making people and these companies a lot of money. The Microsoft division is worth $600 million by itself. Meanwhile, the Sony division is only worth about $47 million or $43, right? The PlayStation division. So, even though they sold 110 million consoles, quote-unquote, according to their numbers, right? Their software sales really don't say that. They're not indicative of that. Because if they were, then you would see, right, the numbers that would show, like, in the top 10. You see their top 10 chart, and in their top 10 chart, the number one game on their, uh, play game on there is Fortnite, which is a free-to-play. Okay? And when you look at the rest of the games, going all the way down from their top 10... The only game that you see there is Multiplats. You don't even see their first party IPs up there. Of top 10 selling, best selling, and playing games. It's always 
other things other than their multi-plans, uh, other than their first-party IPs, which that shows you that their first-party IPs don't really sell. Where are the numbers for Eternal? They're nowhere to be found. Sackboy, nowhere to be found. Godfalls, nowhere to be found. Even for freaking Demon Souls, they're nowhere to be found. The only thing that came out was the Spider-Man when originally they said, quote, they said it themselves that it didn't sell that well. It sold like 600,000 copies. Then a month later, they come out of nowhere with some bull crap, hokey doke shit saying that they sold 4 million units. In one month, they sold 4 million units out of nowhere from that night and day, right? Keeping in mind that that's BS. There's no way something's going to sell that fast in such a short time. Okay? It just that doesn't happen. So, they do that. Their vertical slice like they always do. So, same thing like they, they did with their commemorative 500 unit sold console lifetime. That they said they sold 500 million unit consoles to that point. They were in the Guinness World Book of Records. And then it come, you come to find out that it was really 450 million units. Lifetime sales. Where did the other 50 million units went? They just disappeared out of nowhere. Thin air, poof. Magically delicious. Sony is the masters. The masters of the vertical slice. They're the masters of it. They're the masters of it. They love. So like I was saying, they are the masters of the vertical slice, of skewing things, making things up, changing them around. However they see fit, they just do it all the time. They've been doing this since they entered the industry in the very beginning with the PlayStation 1. This is not new. And I'm tired of repeating myself. It's been, what, 25, 30 years they've been around and still it's the same old back and forth BS like it goes in one ear out to the other one. Nobody wants to ever accept the facts, right? Of what they do. So, no matter what, console sales mean nothing without the software sales. And in this case, now in this day and age, the streaming sales, right? Services. That's why it's very important for Sony to do something to make it better for PSN. So that it makes it more appealing so they get revenue for that. That's why Sony's trying other things like buying shares from Epic, buying shares from uh, you know esports, buying Crunchyroll, trying to buy Filmation or Funimation. Uh, that's why you see them investing in letting their movies being streamed in Netflix and they paid them over a billion dollars for that. That's why you see them trying to put their services on the TVs. That is why you see them doing all those things, like putting games on PC, because they need the revenue. Without revenue, you can't continue to make games and continue to exist in any industry, especially games, because it's very expensive and the risk is very high because, because the intake is not as easy as, you know, as the risk, because nothing's guaranteed. And most games, most of the time, tend to fail even if they're good quality games that they spend a lot of money on. They just, it's the nature of the, the, the way things are in the industry and with games. Okay? So something with services like Game Pass obviously is so appealing because it makes people play games that they otherwise wouldn't purchase day and day, day one with, with you know, thinking, well, it looks good, but what about if it sucks? Without having to be afraid of paying 70, 60 bucks for a game and regretting it, not being able to trade it in back or return it back for another game and saving themselves cash. By not doing this, Game Pass eliminates this and then they can actually play the game and if they like it, they can go out and buy it, whether it's digital or physical, with their convenience, with comfort and with ease and a peace of mind that they don't have to worry about that they wasted their money in a game they don't like. Okay, that is why console sales mean nothing. Just look at the Wii. With the Wii, it sold 128 or 27 million units that generation. Granted, the console was only 199 dollars, but it sold like hotcakes because everyone was playing. Every casual, they had it in nursing homes, they had it in in hospitals, they had it in in in, in churches for whenever they did things with the youth. 
they played the games because it was gimmicky, right? But when you looked at the ratio of the sales, it was like two to one or one or one to one, where every con which means where every console they sold, they people would buy one game with the console or two games. So the sales for those multiplats, and even with the exception of maybe some other you know exclusives, right? They didn't sell. So it started to fail and it was doing bad. And now it's in the Hall of Fame of video games. It's the same idea when you say, well, PS4 sold 110 million. Okay. That was last generation. And look at the console sale. Their highest selling game was Spider Man first party, 13 million. 13 million. Granted, on, on Nintendo side, on the Switch, they sold. I think it was 12 or 13 million with, I think, Zelda Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey, one of those. So, to put it into perspective, and they had less consoles, right? And that was because Spider-Man, they gave out 6 million two months after the initial release for free with a physical copy in a bundle with the slim version just in Black Friday that November. That's why they grew up there. So, in reality, if you really look at it, it only sold like 4 million at the initial launch, six million were given out, and then after the, the rest came with smaller sales when the game first dropped in April for 40, and then it went down from 40 in April and June on during that E3, that following summer, it was $20, and that's when the game started selling more and more, because people were buying it because it was cheap, right? So it was worth buying, no problem. Not to say that the game wasn't worth the, the $60. I'm just giving you the example of why those numbers raised and they kept raising because of what happened. But that's still diminished returns. That means they didn't make no real profit off of that. All they did was bring awareness to the game by people having copies of it in their hands. So 13 million people that probably weren't a bit aware before, like with the other older Spider-Man games, are aware of it now, right? Including the fanboys of comics. So, the last topic is the Metacritic. The Metacritic. Guys, you gotta stop. We already seen that Metacritic was exposed with The Last of Us 2. It was exposed just recently with MLB. It was exposed with the Shadow of Colossus remake. Okay? The Shadow of Colossus remake scored 91 back in the PS2 era. And when they did the new remake, it scored 91 again. When all it did was put new graphics. It had no added content, no refined gameplay, no new added things to the game. It was just the same game with better graphics. Prettier graphics. That's it. You got a 91. Meanwhile, Gears of War Ultimate, right? Not only did it did more and improve graphics, it added DLC story that was never included, that was on PC, which was added content. Added more content to the multiplayer. Added more weapons, more perks, and even attributes and characters that were never available in the series in that first game, even in the multiplayer component, was added on and put to the game. So it was, and the game was priced accordingly. The game was only 40 bucks, as opposed to like, let's say, the the way they, they do, they did with Demon Souls, that's $70, and it's the same game, right? With just pretty graphics, no added content in any way, shape, or form. Not no weapons, not new bosses, not a new level, nothing. Just prettier graphics, updated graphics. And that's to the Sony only dummy that keeps coming in my comment, trying to say, oh, you guys always want to deter, you know, de Demon Soul, but yet you always want to put Gears Ultimate and Master Chief Collection. And uh, if you want to go to Master Chief Collection, Master Chief Collection was six games in one. And then you got Reach afterwards and ODSC, so it's really seven. Plus the two from the original versions, which was one and two, which puts it to a total of, of uh, uh, what is it? I think it's a total of like eight games, nine games altogether, if you want to be technical, for $60, including the multiplayer component. It was nothing separate. And they ain't overcharge you like they did with Demon Souls, giving you a bare bone remaster with just better graphics, selling you for seventy dollars with nothing new. But that's the logic of you Sony guys. So it's funny that you put it there and expose yourself because you look and sound stupid, and then you leave the evidence there and people can see it. 
because the stupidity you can't hide it's right there in public so that's why I love it for you for Mr. Sony only that be in my comments all the time so again Metacritic exposed themselves with The Last of Us part two where the entire fan base of the game was completely upset did not like the game any way shape or form it was at a fucking 3.4 and they even shut it down where you couldn't even score. They would not allow negative scores anymore from the actual fans so that the points would go up and they would look a little bit better on the user score. Right? Meanwhile, in the media, the darlings of Sony in all the sites had it at like a 92, 95, 98, whatever. Making it seem like it was the best game ever. And then baseball, every freaking year, it was scored every year. What happened? The game was since 2016, no, since 2013, 14, even 11 and 12. It scored in the high 80s and early and mid 90s, or you know, uh, low 90s, and it was always considered great, fantastic. Now it came out to Xbox. It came out to Xbox. The user score is higher than the Metacritic score. They have it like lower because it's not great anymore. It's nothing new. All of a sudden. And you want to use the metric of Metacritic. It's an aggregated site. When you go in there, it's nothing but those same sites, like the same thing with the awards, that love Haiti on Xbox, that are biased to Clony, that are biased to Nintendo. They always keep doing the scores. They're the ones who put them in, and they can do whatever they want. Then you got all these other stupid people that do the certification process, go in there, and then they put a zero on the thing. I saw one score guy that he had gave a Sony game, I think it was a 9.5, and then he gave a Nintendo game, which I think was Pokemon Snap, and 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 uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, Xbox game, a zero, but gave the, the PlayStation game a, a nine point five. Like, it's not reliable. It's aggregated, meaning anyone can go in there and do whatever they want based on their liking and their choices. The only reviews that actually count there are the user base. And even with the user base, you see the disparity. It's like Rotten Tomatoes with movies. You be seeing the disparity big time. And sometimes they match up, sometimes. But most of the time, they be all off the charts. They don't even make sense. And you're wondering like, well, how? So stop using the Metacritic score because to be honest, any real gamer that's a real gamer will never make a decision, an opinion, or a choice on a game based on the ideologies of a Metacritic site or other reviewers, what they feel and think. Because what I feel when I play a game is not what you're going to feel when you play a game. So whatever I feel, I can just tell you what I think and what I feel the game might offer you, but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to feel the same thing. So when you play it, you might think it's dog shit. That's how I felt about God of War, the new one. I felt it was too overly rated, not enough gameplay there that you control the parts that were birthed controlling that were cinematic that was the staple of the series you know I felt too much walking too much climbing too much you know telling the boy to go up the ladder falling down too much troll fighting the same trolls the Valkyries you fight like 12 times and it had too much unnecessary puzzles and platforms that just became tedious monotonous and boring then when it had good moments like when you fight the dragon to get the teeth to get the firepower that were amazing that looked great they were few and far between but I'm not going to say a game is amazing because it had two or three moments that were off the charts that were actually worth the time while everything else just felt lame. And I'm not going to judge it just on graphics because even if the graphics look nice, if the game doesn't keep me interested and, and I don't feel like I'm having a good time, the graphics are not going to mean anything to me. They're just going to be like, yeah, they look nice, but the game was boring. I don't like it. I thought it was lame. And that's an example that I'm trying to give you. So Metacritic... It's like you saying you like this game to one person when the other person don't like it. Or like you telling a person that doesn't like RTS to like Guilty uh, Gears of War Tactics because it looks good because you liked it because you're an RTS fan. You see what I'm saying? So Metacritic is flawed. It, it's not reliable. It, with, it has a bunch of bias and, 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 and unjustly reviews with no type of... You know, control whatsoever. There is no kind of control. They just do whatever they want and they're allowed, and people don't do nothing in the Metacritic site. They don't do anything to fix that. Okay? So, again, that 
is a stupid example of trying to say why PlayStation is better. Metacritics, game scores, console sales, or Jeff Keighley Game of the Year awards do not determine jack jack crap in this in this industry. It's not going to change any facts of what it actually is and what needs to really be how it really needs to be acknowledged, addressed, and approached. And you guys can't take it. You, it's like you can't handle it. No matter what is said, and, and no matter how many times I explain to y'all, y'all still don't want to get it. That is not going to affect a real gamer, or an Xbox gamer for that matter, or a PC gamer, or even a Nintendo gamer. Nintendo people play on Nintendo because they like what they offer. They don't care about sales. They don't care about metrics. They don't care about Metacritic. They don't care about none of that. That's what a real gamer does. You play the games that you like on your preferred platform and even others if they don't come to that console because of whatever reason for an exclusivity deal or a bias, whatever the case may be, so that you don't miss out on the games. Not necessarily the consoles, but the games. But you're still going to have your preferred console, which in this case is Xbox. None of that stuff is going to change, and you guys need to get that through your head. Learn to understand no one cares about none of those three metrics or none of those three things. That is pointless, and it has no value and no meaning. It's just that simple. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't like the video. As always, share the video with someone you think might like it. And if you guys would ever, uh, like I said, uh, you know, came to my channel for the first time, I welcome you. I hope that you like what I do and continue to come. And if you subscribe, thank you because I know you didn't have to. And it means the world to me. But since you did, I consider you part of my family now. As always, for those that always continue to come and give me that love and support, love you guys very much because without you, this would not mean anything. This channel would not be sustained, would mean nothing. So without you guys, I wouldn't be, you know, any type of presence here. So for you guys, I love you very much, like always, and thank you for all your continued kind support. If you guys want to find me on social media, you can find me on Twitter under he bought powerful gamer and on Instagram on the C underscore respect. Hit me up on any of those DMs if you guys ever want to make a donation, maybe that you want me to highlight something or do something on my channel, like review something, or I'll be my honor. I'll be more than humbled and glad to do so. Just hit me up in the DM or work out the particulars. If you guys ever want to help me out in any way, shape, or form for the kindness of your heart to help me better my channel because you want to help me out to help me grow because you like what I do, then. You have some ways to do it. It's all down in the description below. You can do it with my Patreon and with a PayPal page that I have. Um, and of course, it's if you want to, from the kindness of your heart, it's not obligated. It, you know, it's only strictly if you want to. So, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Peace and bye bye. Be safe out there.